Sup everybody, this is Carrick with ACG, the Bearded Shaman. I'm gaming, leading gamers through the darkness of bad intent with good reviews for titles at the speed of embargo. Today's title is the happiness generator known as Necropolis for the PC and later for the PS4 and Xbox One. The folks at Harebrain Studios thought, you know what? There's entirely too much happiness and longevity in games these days. Let's make a title that's roguelike in a third person view and hey, why not throw players into a living dungeon ruled by a sentient giant pyramid and have players try to get through it. So in a weird way, it's like one life gauntlet Dark Souls, and an ever-changing dungeon with that demonic pyramid from Gravity Falls as the DM. The fine folks at Harebrain were nice enough to also hand over code prior to launch, unlike many other titles lately, and I'm looking at you, Ghostbusters. Let's see how they did with this roguelite title, shall we? As always, if you liked the video, eh, maybe share it or subscribe. So here's the review for Necropolis. Playing as He-Man's best friend Orko in a Dark Souls game, 360 faceplate dungeons for each color adventurer, and some of the best, oh dear god, these bastards again kind of gameplay since Diablo. Graphics start first. I do have to say this, Necropolis is a hard read. No one has feet, so I assume these hardy adventures were so badass that before they came here to do battle with a talking minotaur maze, they saw one another's feet off just to make sure the maze is more of a challenge. Probably not the best idea here because no matter if you're getting sliced, diced, fried, stabbed, piked, spiked, or smashed, the game relishes in looking unique as it's kicking your ass. A mix between a flat shaded polygon look that really reminds you more of a building block graphics mentality and something ran through a medieval Tron filter. If there's anything said about Necropolis, it's probably not going to be that it's bland looking. Now, the game can look surprisingly arcane and also technologically questionable at the same time, which is a little bit hard, but it's got like glowing glyphs burning into life on a mundane room wall one second and lowering you into the next level through what feels surprisingly like the travel scenes in Tron movies the next. It's not going to be to everyone's taste, but its excellent animation and unique character really sets it apart and mixed with his stupendous, even randomly generated level design means that moving through the levels is rewarded with a surprising number of wow moments. Even if it's nothing more than a hydra spilling forth from a well attacking whatever enemy is near it. There's a very real dark atmosphere here and a magic to their minimalism that is actually not seen in a lot of games. And that unique look continues on to the characters themselves. Now, while you can only choose the die color when you start of your hero, which also has a tendency to slightly adjust the look of the dungeons, it's really once you get into it that you notice that both the level design, but even more importantly, the enemies are something that you're going to remember. The strange shelled staff wielding crazies from the swamp levels to the screaming psychotic lead singers of death metal bands wielding all manner of death dealing instruments were characters that I'm probably going to remember far after I stopped playing this game. However, the game doesn't run the best. At 1440p on a GTX 1080, it was dropping frames in various locations. And with this minimalistic look, that's actually a little bit disappointing. Overall, though, I would say this. The game is a looker. It's just not going to be one for everybody. Sound, music, and voice. Let's shake things up and do sound first. It's excellent. Now, sure, it's been months since I've traipsed into a deep dark dungeon and went sword to sword with undead warriors, but yeah, this sounds pretty good. Rarely do effects get too chaotic, and though that's more of a design element in how battles work out, it's excellent sound work combined with that planning that does so well here. Electricity crackles out of a crossbow with questionable safety precautions for the user, and slamming sword into shield is always met with a resounding clank, while environmental sounds like echo and reverb and the thunderous crunch of a platform depositing you one more layer down in hell are all done really well here. Good sound. Music. Now, you have to take your hat off to a soundtrack that knows when it is not needed, letting gameplay sink into the gamer's brains while it sits back, sort of waiting, and then it pounces forward whenever a character runs around a corner to find the world's scariest hermit crab. It doesn't matter if it's hitting you with excellently paced and perfectly complementary concussion loops or just running an ambient string vibe. It's great music throughout, but when that synth chord begins to swell up as you journey for the 55th time down into death itself, man, it is some really good stuff for being so minimalistic. Not a track I'd listen to outside of this game, but certainly something I enjoy within it. Voice. Uh, most of what is there spoken in another language, a suitably crunching, altogether unsettlingly evil language, but one that's almost so different enough to just be a sound effect. So, moving on. Gameplay. 
A game this minimalist has to absolutely nail its gameplay loops, and I'd say, as a whole, Necropolis does from start to finish. At the start, you choose a new game, pick a male or female adventure, and pick the die color. Now, when picking the color, it's a heritage-like system, and it displays that you're either the son or the daughter of a particular entity, and those colors or dies are sort of that chosen avatar. It's good stuff, but it's not a class or anything. The dungeons themselves, as I said, seem to be slightly altered in their color when you pick those dies, but I haven't seen a one-for-one -one ratio of change there. Now, moving downward, the name of the game here. As you quest, you kill enemies which give you money in the form of jewels and items like swords, food, building blocks for constructibles, and so forth. Fighting is both strangely complex and simple. You have a normal and power attack, both of which can be powered up by holding their requisite buttons, and you also have defensive moves on your other side with your offhand, like swinging your shield or holding it to block blows, or later finding items like wands or crossbows for offhand use. While not complex in the presentation, it's the mechanics of battle that show some finesse here with items slowing down or speeding up attacks, subtly changing your attack patterns, your animations, and your windows, both for enemy attacks but also for defending yourself from that one last crazy armored guy that wants to wear your head like a damn top hat. Now, there are no two-handed weapons in this game, but you can, of course, have a defensive item in your left hand or a weapon there as well. There's also a heady crafting and alchemy system with all manner of items you can make, from food that regenerates health and stamina to bomb of all kinds and other odds and ends to extend your life just a bit. You can also buy various special items with rewards that you get, like codexes, which are apparently written by the world's nerdiest dungeon master. No kidding, I would say about 70% of these things I couldn't figure out what they did, though that was sort of the joke about them anyway. While some have you, let's say, getting more health back from edibles, other had more mysterious surprises in store and hinted at unique game level powers. There were a large number of them, so experimentation is advised, especially if you have multiple people plane. And really that's most of what this game is in a nutshell. It's about exploring, equipping, dying, and trying again. And that's the beauty here. Exploring is done easily enough. But I can't lie, whoever programmed the camera and I need to have a little talk. Lack of transparencies means if the camera is crunched down against a wall due to how you've moved, you can see almost nothing, resulting in death rather quickly and could have used a great deal of shoring up. Then again, it's the game's organic equipping up that is so enjoyable. First a longsword, then a piece of metal that looks like someone didn't have their glasses on when they forged it, then an axe made a bad tie and endowed with the healing hatred of fire. And then without warning, you're suddenly wearing armor that makes you look like an upside down candelabra. It's awesome, it's great stuff, each giving odd changes to your abilities, little small ones, they're nothing huge, but just enough, like a little health here or a sword that's a bit faster there, to really adjust your gameplay. See, that's the thing, it's not these massive changes many times, though there are a couple, it's the smaller ones that integrate back into the way the gameplay works. There's also the dying. And trust me, it's going to happen. The game isn't Dark Souls tough. It's not even close. It's not even the same stratosphere. But it is a bit tougher than many other titles, and some enemies are so fast and hit so strong that they require a very particular skill set to attack, which might be almost impossible if they're also surrounded by three chittering scarlet neon ninjas all shooting crossbows at you and dancing into the shadows while they're laughing. See, that's the thing. In that way, it is a lot like Dark Souls. But I think there's a bit more flexibility in the movement system here, which I think means a little less dying. When you do die and you're alone, it's over though, completely, kiboshed, you're back to the start. If you're with others, they have a specific amount of time to resurrect you with items. If not, you're resurrected with them, but everything is gone and you're back to level one. That's a stone cold bitch. I mean, come on. Nobody wants slow-mo Pete following them around after that anyway, and uh, that person has to end up buying all of their health benefits back and stuff like that, so you really want to keep them alive. Where I think Necropolis stunningly excels is its it overall adherence to smart co-op. Sure, single-player slaying's enjoyable, but co-op multiplayer is where the title shows the mastery of the magic they've contained here, with a constant tripwire-tight gameplay loop of exploration, pushing for more loot, pulling back to safety, and snap, someone's dead. What do we do? We have to go, we have to save them, you go there, I'll go there. It's drop in and drop out and just works, and when it's working, Working, it works pretty goddamn well. Sadly, I think when it comes to the gameplay, there is one little issue here, and that's that even after a short amount of time, some of the game felt long in the tooth. Much of it due to the weapons move sets, which even when changed up, wouldn't be hard to mistake for being actually the same move sets for multiple weapons. That can just get a little bit long in the tooth, especially for a game that is like this. I wish there were more variation, that's all. Fun factor. It's good fun for a while. It may not keep everyone's attention as a good deal of the content feels the same regardless if the randomized dungeons have changed up or not. The collectibles and the way the death system works are interesting, but it won't hold water for many folks. And lastly, it's not a super long game and despite the ability to play it more than once, I'm just not sure that actual variability within the title makes it as attractive a feature as I think some people may think. So, as always, you guys know me, I rate games on a buy, wait for a sale, rent, or if it's a PC game, deep, deep sale, and of course, never touch rating scale. 
I like it, but it's samey feeling and overall lack of true flexibility when it comes to mixing things up and making you feel unique as you play over and over and over again means that I think this is actually a wait for a sale. It is a very enjoyable game for a time, but I am not 100% sure I feel comfortable saying that time is worth $30 per person to enter it. So anyway, that's it for me. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Maybe check out the Twitter or the Patreon. If you didn't, remember, give it a thumbs down. And as always, yeah. for more reviews that review the entire game, stick with ACG. Oi. Peace out. Enjoy the rest of your week. Oi! Yep, it works. <laughs>